Hashem. I hope and pray that you give Israel peace, that you protect Israel, that you rebuild Jerusalem, that you extend your right hand to protect your children and to watch over us like you always do, but to extend your mercy to a higher level that we don't need to get slapped. You can see Hashem off the derech. The punches and the slaps, I know they work 100% because you see when people are getting rockets thrown on their head, what's the first thing they're doing? Please, God, save me. That's exactly what God wants. The fact that he has to do it to rockets, that's the sad part. He doesn't have to. That's the crazy part. He'll give you all that protection just for keeping Shabbat. Think about it. Put on a scale. What would you rather have? Keep Shabbat with peace or rockets falling on your head? <laughs> Keep Shabbat with peace. It's not so hard. Hang out with people that you like. That's number one. And if you don't like anybody, hang out by yourself. Read a book. Talk about Torah. Enjoy the company of your family if you have. And show appreciation to God. Keeping Shabbat is really not that hard. It's hard. Because the Satan makes it hard. But if you're clever and you can mentally defeat the Yetzirah, you'll know that it's not that hard. It's really just chilling, eating, hanging out with your friends, going to synagogue, praying. It's really not that big of a deal. And for that, God is going to bless you. He's going to feed you. He'll feed you regardless. Just like he said in the prayer of today for Thursday. What did he say? Even though you complain that the waters of Merivai still save you always, always in the future when I know that you're going to sin against me, I still save you. Always. That's what Hashem was saying in that bracha. Salah, salah. Why had to say always at the end? I save you. I saved you. I save you always. Why always? Always to remind you that in the future when you're going to sin against me, I'll still save you. And he does. That's why he's God. And that's why we're his children. And that's why he goes out of our way. Excuse me, out of his way to do everything he can for us. Just like you would do for your child. But you know what? If you're a good father and you see your kid bullying somebody, you will punish him. And sometimes we need to get punished being God's children. And that's just the facts. The arrogance and the pride. That's a big problem that we have in our nation and we really need to scrub that out real hard because I promise you that's something it's better off you doing because when you do it it will come through hard work studying getting close to God and fixing your midot but when God has to humble you it's not so fun put your face in the dirt make you look stupid excuse my language make you look silly and foolish man Hashem will do it man he'll trip you up live on TV and you'll forget what you want to say and you'll look real Embarrassed bro That's all I could say But It doesn't have to get to that point You just have to trust him Know that he's the God of the world But especially the God of Israel That's what he calls himself And he always calls himself The God of Israel And if you're clever You're gonna see that If you are non-Jew Trust me when I tell you Seven laws of Noah Keep them I tell you that with love in my heart Don't make animals suffer You have lobsters Kill it, then boil it. Don't boil it alive. Same thing with the crabs. I'm giving you great advice because if you do that, you won't enter heaven. And another thing for the Christians, and this is a lot bigger, one of the seven laws of Noah is don't have any other gods. Don't bow down to idols. You do that with JC. If you get rid of those two things and you're a good Christian, you get to heaven. No Easter, no Ash Wednesday, no Christmas, none of that, yo. That's all made up. I'm sorry, it's a man made book. Go check the New Testament. There's a lot of mistakes. And it has nothing to do with the Old Testament. It's a whole new book that's completely separate. And it goes against the word of God and it's not real. And we can prove it to you a hundred times over. When God gives a book, he doesn't have to give another book. He already knows what he wants to say and everything is contained in that book. That's what makes him so great. And he told you. He said, I will never break the covenant with this nation. I will be mad at them. I will punish them. I will hit them. I will do things to them, pogroms, God forbid, a holocaust. But I will never break my covenant with them. It's an eternal covenant. Oti leolam. That's the proof right there. Shabbat is for eternity. If God is breaking his covenant with the Jews and giving it to another nation, why does he call it an eternal covenant? Oti leolam. Tell me, please, if you're Christian, I'd like to know the answer. There is no answer because the answer is it's only the God of Israel. And if you're a non-Jew, <clears throat> follow the seven laws of Noah. You don't want to do that? Then convert and be a Jew. And God bless, we take you in. You know why? Because we ain't fake. We don't need to go proselytize and go, you know what I'm saying, become missionaries and go grab people into Judaism. No. 
The opposite. We sit back, we chill. You know why? You want to come? You come to us. You know why? Because we hold the truth. When you have the truth, people come to you. You don't go chase them. You understand? That's good advice. I learned that from a rabbi. I used to study from Rabbi Mizrahi. Give him credit for that. He said it just like that, and I took his words, and I said it just like he did. Because I thought it was powerful. So I took it, and I used it to teach you. And hopefully you can take those words and teach it to others. So let's talk a little bit about Avram Avinu. You know what made Avram Avinu so great? Is that he didn't complain. Hashem gave him all these tests. Leave your house. Do this. Sacrifice your son. Uh, they kidnapped his wife. They put him in the king's palace. They All these things they did to Avram Avinu. He never complained. He was righteous. He gave his life for God. Things didn't go his way. He never complained. That's what made Avram Avinu so great. That he never complained. Because the whole point of life and the Torah is to trust God. That's all it's about. Check any story. You can bring me any story. Korach didn't trust God. Um, any story. Abraham Avinu trusted God. Yaakov trusted. Esav didn't. Everybody you're going to see, they either trusted God or they didn't. That's the mamash metric. We could slice the cake right down the middle. To the right, everybody that trusted. To the left, everybody that didn't. Absolutely. I don't care what anybody says. That's 100%. That's the whole point of the Torah, man. You're going to trust me or not trust me. And this is what Abraham Avinu had that really separated him from everybody else. He had a good eye. You know what I like about a good eye? It means, number one, that you're happy with what you have. But it also means that you have compassion. You see, when Abraham Avinu was saving souls, it wasn't just saving a person or giving him something to eat or bringing him... The word of God. No, he tried to save your soul. He actually really cared about you. Sometimes I try to help people come keep Shabbat. They're like, oh, you think you're better than me? I said, God forbid. Why would you even look at it like that? I'm coming to save your soul. Why don't you look at it like I really love you? It's amazing how the Satan will fool people, but that's how it is. But a real pure Jew would know when I come, I come with 100% love. Not to put you down, not to make you feel bad. Yeah, I might tell you. <clears throat> that you're unappreciated for not keeping Shabbat, but I think we would all agree that's true. Because an appreciative person would keep Shabbat. A thankful person would keep Shabbat. Somebody gave you seven diamonds and asked for one diamond back, I think everybody would give it back. God gave you seven days of the week. He's asking for one day back. You're not going to give it back. But I'll still tell you He loves you. I'll still tell you that you're not going against Hashem Dafka, and those are the people that got killed in the time of Beit HaMikdash from stoning. Why stoning? Because midah connected midah. You're going to break Shabbat for physical pleasures. I'm going to kill you with physical stones. This is really how it is, bro. It's sad, but that's the way Hashem does it, man. But those are only for people that go against Him. Dafka, that's why you need a warning in public. It's people that don't care about the Torah. Heretic, atheist, somebody like that. They'll get that. But to you, I know you're not like that. You're a grateful person. Here, I see to me you're grateful when I hold the door for you or I help you. It's just that you're not being grateful to God And you need to work on that That's all Nobody should get mad about that If you do The problem's on you Trust me God will tell you that Love you Hashem A pompous spirit was Bilam He therefore spoke in a boastful manner When he said The world is he who hears God's word And who knows the mind of the Most High Numbers 24, 16 God forbid you shouldn't talk like that. Sometimes I say, you know, I know what God is thinking, but I, you don't do it in a boastful manner. You could do it in a humble manner. But here, look what he's saying. I, I know the mind of the Most High. See how bad that sounds, Brad? Don't brag, or God will put your head down and humble you. Better you do it yourself, like I said earlier. Exactly. But you do it yourself, you don't have to suffer and go through pain. Bilam lived till he was 33. How do we know? Because King David... Prayed for the death of the wicked, Doeg and Achitofel. Like we said earlier, a wicked person will not live out half the years of his life. Psalms 90.10. And since a person's years are about 70, <clears throat> they will die before the 35th year. Doeg died 34, Achitofel 33. And Rabbi Hanina was told that Bilam died at 33 when he was killed by the general Pinchas. I like this. I was just telling this to my mom. She was messing up the story though. <laughs> She's so cute. <laughs> All right, listen. Imagine in the middle of the night, somebody woke you up and told you that there was a treasure in the middle of the street. I don't know. Just like somebody came up to you and said, listen, get up. I promise you. An angel came to you and said, listen, 
<clears throat> just go outside your door in the middle of the street. I don't know. Somebody dropped a bag with a billion dollars of diamonds. Get up now. One, grab it and run back into your house and it's yours. You would get up. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Everybody admit it. My mother said, no, I'd be tired. So I keep sleeping. Baloney, you'll get up. You'll get, oh no, my mother said, oh, maybe somebody will take him. Or bottom line is, bottom line is you would get up. You would run to get those diamonds. You grab them, bring them home and deposit it in your bank. But one day those diamonds or that money is going to be gone and there's going to be nothing left of it. So for something that's temporary, like money, which comes and goes, you're going to get up in the middle of the night and run. But to go run to praise God, you're not going to do. To get up in the morning and pray to God, you won't do. <clears throat> and that's for eternity. That's something that you would do, that you invest in, that will last you for eternity. The diamonds are going to go soon. The rubies are going to go soon. The money is going to get spent sooner or later. And if you're lucky, it won't get spent, God forbid, on tragedies. On things that you have to do, God forbid, your sick kids get sick or something like that. Spend, that's why I always tell people, bro, don't make money in a dirty way because you're going to have to pay through that. Pay for that. Big time, you're going to pay for that. Through your ear, you're going to pay for that. How? Sometimes, God forbid, God won't make your kids sick, man. Sick. But that's how Hashem does it. You don't want to play with him, bro. I promise you, he's the most gangster when it comes to things like that and everything else. So in the middle of the night, you're going to get up for something that's temporary, but something that's for eternity, you won't do. I like this. Protect your peace. You know what that means? Protect your peace. That means don't let people mess you up. You want a good head. Don't let somebody come in and bring you down. Just like the other day, I was studying on Shabbat. This atheist comes up to me, wants to like engage me in a conversation. And you're so slick. He comes up to me, hey, young fellow, Shabbat Shalom. You know, trying to be all nice. Get out of here, bro. I was very respectful. In the class where I told the guys, and listen, I'm in a very peaceful state of mind. I'm studying Torah. And I'm not really in the mood to talk right now. He said, okay, no problem. And he walked away. God bless because Hashem knew I came for the sake of heaven so Hashem put something in his heart to make him disappear and he did thank God and I was able to study in peace Hashem does that by the way he does that to kings he does that to nations he does that to people he can do it to your boss he can do it to whoever he wants because in the end he's the boss that's right when I say the boss the boss of everything think about it he holds life and death in his hand you might think that you hold life and death in your hand when you have a gun in your hand and you could go and shoot somebody. But you see sometimes people go to shoot and the gun gets jammed or something goes wrong or he gets nervous or the other guy has a gun and he gets scared. <laughs> in the end, Hashem decides who's going to live and die. Remember that. Just like the famous rabbi who went, if I'm not mistaken, Rabbi Hanina ben Dosa, if I'm not mistaken, or Rabbi Meir, there was a snake, like a black mamba, in front of the base medrash and it wasn't letting the people enter. Every time somebody wanted to enter, it would go to bite them. So they called this rabbi and the rabbi came over immediately and he said, okay, where is it? So they pointed over there to the ground where there was like a little hole next to the side of this of the base medrash in the ground. And the rabbi went over, took off his sandal, put his foot inside the hole and got bit. And then all of a sudden they got nervous. They were thinking, oh my God, the rabbi is going to die. This, they started praying for him, tilim, <laughs> started to laugh the rabbi. He bent down, took the snake, put it around his neck. He said, what's the problem? You praying to your limb for me? Pray to your limb for the snake. <laughs> they were in shock. So the rabbi looked at him and said, you know why this happened? Because it's not the snake that kills. It's the sin that kills. It's not the mask that's saving you from coronavirus. It's God. And the coronavirus, if it was to kill you with the mask, it'll kill you. You know it. I know it. And everybody and their mother knows it. You better understand that, yo. If you're real, you would know it. person should always spend his time carefully and not waste time with meaningless pursuits because when time is lost it's irreplaceable once a day is over it can never be regained amen what great advice man I, I gotta open up a school seriously like a small private school just to teach these lessons to kids kika academy bro it's gotta be done man how do we know that one must study torah every second of his life i'll tell you because in the book of joshua 1 8 what does it say the book of Joshua 1 8 what does it say and you should meditate on it day and night I like that that's a good proof right from the book of Joshua that's what it says we say that in the brachot let's see what other gems I have I said that already don't brag because God will put you down and humble you hard 
And trust me, you don't want that, yo. I hope you're paying attention because I'm about to read you something that's beautiful. A humbled spirit is like an illuminated staircase upon which one can climb and attain all other good traits. It's the doorway to the fear of God and the observance of the commandments. I got to read that again, yo. A humbled spirit is like an illuminated staircase upon which one can climb and attain all other good traits. It's the doorway to the fear of God and the observance of the commandments. Fear of God. I don't understand. But people are telling you not to fear God. I'm not getting into it. I have a past lecture. I speak about it. Fear him and fear him a lot. It's very noble. You think this is, bro. If a person is wealthy and humble, he thanks God every hour for giving him the opportunity to do charity. He does not take pride in his wealth, realizing that no matter how much good he does, he can never repay God for all the good he has done for him. Amen. And I already told you the three qualities that Avram Avinu had were a good eye, a humbled spirit, ooh, and a contrite soul. That's beautiful, yo. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. <clears throat> and, and this is not so beautiful, but actually it is beautiful because anything coming from the mouth of God is beautiful. This is actually from the book of Psalms 55, 24. And God will bring them down to the pit of destruction. Men of blood and fraud will not live out half their days and I will trust in you. Psalms 55, 24. This was actually written by King David about Doeg and Achitophel. Wow, wow. And you see they died young, as I said earlier. The love between Jonathan and David was real. You know why? Because when David eulogized, when King David eulogized him, you know what he said? He said, your friendship has been wonderful to me, greater than the love for a woman. So you know what he meant? That's in the second book of Samuel 126. What was David saying when he said that? I'll tell you what he was saying. Who was supposed to be the successor to the throne of King Shaul? It was supposed to be Yonatan. But Yonatan saw that King David was great. Yonatan saw that King David was blessed by the kingdom of heaven. So Yonatan stepped aside. And even though his father was jealous and hated David, Yonatan still made his allegiance with King David because he you know he was pure and holy and deserved the job. Humbled himself, put himself down, stepped to the side, and let the real leader do what he had to do. And that is a quality that you have no idea. The reward that he gets for that is tremendous, bro. Tremendous. Yonatan, think about it. Think about it. King David is one of the most holiest people that ever lived. And that's what he's saying about you. That I love you more than the love of a woman. <laughs> now, what does that mean? I don't know. Somebody told me that some of these reform rabbis, they try to make it sound like he was gay. God forbid. Bro, who would even say? I can't even say it in my lecture like that. But I'm just telling you what's out there. Don't ever let them fool you like that. Nah, that's not what it means. It means that sometimes a wife wouldn't give up power and glory for her husband. But here you... Gave up in power and glory for a friend, not even for a for a spouse. And that's what made it so special, and that's why he loved him so much. And that's why I'm so happy that Hashem allowed me to teach it to you just the way I taught it to you. And you should love God your Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Deuteronomy 6.5, with all your might means with all your money. This indicates that one must love God, even if it means giving up all your possessions or even your very life and soul. That's what we call perfect and pure love. I like that. This is the advice for people that say to poor people, get up, get a job. What's your problem? <laughs> Don't do that. That's the devil fooling you. I prove it to you. One, you lost out on the charity, so you missed out on the mitzvah. And the second one is you do a sin because you insult a person. And then if it's in public, forget about it. God one day is going to make you poor. God forbid, bro. God forbid, man. You're at a light and a guy pulls up, asks you for five bucks, you're with your girl. And you try to act big. Get off my car, yo. What are you, a bum? Go get a job. I promise you, bro. Might take 20 years. Might take 40 years. One day, God forbid, you're going to be a bum. And you're going to know how it feels for somebody to do that to you. And that's sad, man. You see things in this world where you see... I'll give you an example. You may be standing on a corner. And you'll see there's a puddle from the rain. And a guy will come on purpose. Swerve. Splash the homeless person with water and laugh. Now you want to go and grab the guy and beat him up and get all upset and, you know, do the justice for God? Nah, 
Nah, you don't even have to do that because by you chasing them, God forbid, you could get into trouble. You sit back. If it's something you can avoid, you avoid it. But here was a situation I gave you you couldn't avoid. You cannot control that the guy's going to swerve his car into a puddle to splash a homeless guy. But you have to know when that guy runs away and drives off laughing, that one day God will punish him bad for that, yo. You know why? Because if you did that to my kid, if my kid was homeless and I saw on video you did that to him, I would want to really hurt you. You understand? Or I would definitely want to be upset with you. There's no doubt about it. So imagine that's your child. Right? So you would like be ready to die for your child. What do you think? God is not ready to die for his children? <laughs> and he can never die. I can't even say it like that. That's the craziest part. You don't say it, God would die for his children. No. God will kill you for messing with his children. What are you, normal? Get it through your head, man. The last nation you want to play with is Israel. Yes, when Israel messes up, God will slap them. And he slapped us a lot and he slapped us hard. But who are you? Who are you to come and slap another person's child? That's not your business. Mind your business. Let God slap his children. And to B'nai Israel, please, man, I'm begging you. For your mother's sake, do it. Because I know we all attach to our moms and we love them. For the sake of your mom, I'm begging you, bro. Work on yourself. Be a better person, man. Please, please. Appreciate that. Thank you. How many are really going to do it? Probably a few, but those few can make a big impact. <clears throat> a really big impact. All right, let's see what else we got here. Oh, I like this. Jerusalem was destroyed because the people had no shame. Go to the beach today in Tel Aviv where people half naked. People have shame. They don't have no shame. And Jerusalem was destroyed for no shame. Tel Aviv, be careful. Human beings, on the other hand, look straight ahead. I already said that it's a sign that they have free will. Let me read that again because that was deep. Look, animals were created with their faces towards the ground since their final resting place is in the earth. The angels, conversely, were created with their faces towards the heavens since they're spiritual beings and are rooted on high. Human beings, however, look straight ahead. This is a sign that one has free will. The master, therefore, advises, be light as an eagle, just as an eagle flies upward. You should always look to strive to move upward spiritually. Jerusalem was destroyed because of the sin of having no shame. The master here warns the person that he should use his time carefully and not waste it with meaningless pursuits. As I told you before, time is irreplaceable and can never be regained. I like that. A righteous person must humble himself and must be patient and not be impetuous. And he must also be forgiving quickly must forgive quickly and must be able to take criticism without getting upset that, that was a, that's humble it's all about being humble don't neglect Torah study because if you do the Jews will go in exile look at that think about that this verse is alluded to in the verse where the tablets were God's work and the writing was God's writing engraved on the Torah the, use, the word used for engraved in Hebrew is cherut this means freedom when a person devotes his time to studying the word of God He's free from government, persecution, and all other troubles. Amen. Let me read that again. <laughs> this is amazing. Look, the neglect of Torah study results in bitter exile. This is alluded to in the verse that says, The tablets were God's work, and the writing was God's writing engraved on the Torah. The word used for engraved here is cherut, which means freedom. So what is it teaching us? It teaches us that when a person devotes his time to studying the word of God, he will have freedom and be free from government persecution and all other troubles. Amen. The only reason Israel was banished from the Holy Land was because they neglected the Torah. And God said that. He said, God said, for what reason has the land perished? Because the people have abandoned my Torah. Jeremiah 9, 11, 12. Let me read that again, man. Wow. Israel was banished from the Holy Land because of their neglect of Torah study. How do we know? Because God said, what's the reason? God said, for the what God said, for what reason has the land perished? Because the people have abandoned my Torah. Jeremiah 9, 11, 12. You have attached yourselves to God. Oh, you who have attached yourselves to God are all alive today. Deuteronomy 4, 4. You know why I put that in my notes? I'll tell you why. Because it shows you that when you're attached to God, you'll have peace, you'll have happiness, and you'll have life both in this world and the next world. Again, 
you who have attached yourselves to God are all alive today. Deuteronomy 4.4 When a person spends his life pursuing worldly appetites, he will eventually be confronted with the truth that death awaits him and he will waste away from depression. When he lacks something, he may even resort to dishonesty or death to attain it. Ultimately, however, his desires are never fulfilled. Gotta read it again. You who have attached yourselves to God are all alive today. Deuteronomy 4.4 I read that three times just so it really sinks in. Stick to God, you'll be alive. When a person spends his life pursuing worldly appetites, he will eventually be confronted with the truth that death awaits him and he will waste away from depression. When he lacks something, he may even resort to dishonesty or death to attain it. Ultimately, however, his desires are never fulfilled. Three things remove a person from this world. Jealousy, desire, and fame. And those are the three things that you see run wild on social media. Think about it, bro. I gotta speak a little bit quick about social media. Let's think one by one. The three things that remove a person from this world are jealousy loaded on social media. People get just a lot of haters. Where does the hate come from? It comes from jealousy. I told somebody the other day, you can write the most beautiful poem in the world about God. Praising God. He's the most high. There's no one like him. This, that, that. And somebody will criticize it. 100%, bro. That's the way it is. A lot of haters. A lot of jealousy, desire. People, they show their body. Try to hook up online. Everything is about, yo, look how fine she looks. Likes your picture. A married man is going to like your picture. You're on the beach naked. It's 18-year-old girl. And he's going to like it. And he's a married dude. Desire. Rampant with desire. And fame. Fame. You think we care where you are at 10 o'clock in the morning? Nobody cares about your life, bro. No, but you want to go on Instagram and show the whole world your life. You want fame. Again, these are three things that remove a person from this world. Imagine if I was sitting in front of a bunch of kids right now addicted to social media and I explained that to them. It's guaranteed that you're going to get murdered one day. I'm giving you good advice. Look, it takes a person out of this world. You see it, the jealousy, the desire, and the fame. And that's exactly what social media is about, bro. Go look, man. Go look at all the beefs on social media, man. Go look. It's desire to be number one. I'm number one. Look, I'm going to show you. Rap music. I like rap music. I even do rap music. But I do a humble type of religious rap. Not this rap where they talk about Because look at rap. It's all about. Even LL Cool J from back in the day. I'm bad. It's all about me. I'm this. It's all about the fame. I'm the greatest. Ain't no one like me. I could do this. I could do that. I could flip. I could rap. You know what I mean? Whatever. Everything is about how great you are. We ain't trying to hear it, homie. We want something spiritual. We want to feed the soul. At least that's what I want. Jealousy, desire, and fame will take a man out of this frame. And this frame is this world. Do not pursue worldly pleasures wishing that you can eat and drink like a king. You know why? Because your table where you study Torah is for eternity. But the king's table is only temporary. You know why? Because his rule is subjugated to his subjects. If they don't like him anymore, they'll take away his crown and get rid of it. His crown is temporary. But your crown of Torah is for eternity. Remember that. Remember that, bro. Remember that, what I just said to you. I have to repeat that. Don't ever, ever say, I want to be rich and sit at the king's table. Because when you sit at the king's table, you enjoy from the worldly pleasures. And that's not good. That will take you out of this world. So don't do that. Plus the king, you have to understand that he's subject to his subjects. Meaning if they don't like him anymore, they can impeach him. They can get rid of him and take his crown. It's a temporary crown. But here the Torah is a crown for eternity. It will clothe you in righteousness and humility. That will be your garb in the next world. Imagine, man, if you go to the next world full of sin and you're all black and dirty, like filled with tar and they can't even see you. And you look weak and feeble and hurt and sad and depressed and dark. Ugh, horrible. Where does that come from? That will be your garb. That garb comes from sins. Boy, you don't want to sin, man. Let me tell you, as a person that sinned in his life, just like you all have, you don't want to sin, bro. For what? No matter what pleasure you get from that sin, it's temporary pleasure. That pleasure will be for an hour, five minutes, seven seconds. God only knows. But after it comes death, comes destruction. It's not a good look for you, bro. Sins bring death, I promise you, bro. 
Think about it. Name me any person in the universe right now that got murdered or killed or maimed or this or that. It's coming from sins. What else is it coming from? If you claim it comes from something else, then you're a very mean person because you're claiming it came random, which means you take away all the glory from God. I would not do that if I was you. I would give all the glory to God because he's the one that gives you life. Show a little bit of appreciation and trust that he knows what he's doing. Life is short, but the Torah is long. When one wastes his time in idle conversation and gossip, he will never have enough time to truly study Torah. I like that. A truly righteous man is a man who has control of what? Let's see if you know. Of his desires. Meaning he wants to get mad because somebody insulted him, but he stays quiet. That's a real man. If a person struggles to make a livelihood, he should not abandon his Torah studies. The opposite. He should know that because he's studying Torah and he's poor, he will be rewarded for that. You should love your God, your Lord. Deuteronomy 6.5 if a person loves God, all the secrets of the Torah will be meaningful to him. If he does not, the secrets of the Torah will remain close to him. I like that. That's why Hashem gives me some secrets sometimes. You know why? Because I'm close to him. You know why I'm close to him? Because I study his Torah. You see, you got to understand, I'm doing this video now, and it took a lot of time. I had to study, take notes, review it, this, that. All that time that I'm studying, it's like chilling with God. It's like going to his house having some tea, sitting down, talking to him, relaxing, him teaching me, and me listening. Like a good student, ready to listen, because everything he has, I want. I want everything that you have, Hashem. Everything that I could positively, physically, and spiritually get from you, I want. Chokhmah vedat vebina, bina, chokhmah vedat. That's what I want. All of it from you. Loving correction is a very important character trait because it shows humbleness. If somebody corrects you, learn from it and accept it. Because it will show that you're humble, man. You accept it. Criticism. Even if it's unfair, put your ego down, listen, and make peace. Proverbs 4.22 For the words of the Torah are life for the one who finds them and a help for his entire body. The Torah shall be medicine for your navel and moisture for your bones. Proverbs 3.8 It's a tree of life for those who hold tight to it and those who uphold it will be fortunate. Length of days is in the Torah's right hand and it's in his left hand is wealth and fame. Proverbs 3.16 Words of Torah will grant you length of days and additional years of life and peace. Proverbs 3.2 Wow. Let's go over that again, honestly, because we have to. But one studies the Torah with the intent of teaching the community, God will help him in his studies. Proverbs 4.22 For the words of the Torah are life for the one who finds them and help for his entire body. Next, the Torah shall be medicine for your navel and moisture for your bones. Proverbs 3.8 It's a tree of life for those who hold tight to it and those who uphold it will be fortunate. Now pay attention, this is Proverbs 3.16 Length of days is in the Torah's right hand and in its left hand is wealth and fame. Words of the Torah will grant you length of days and additional years of life and peace. Amen. Peace, that's the whole goal, man. <laughs> it's all about peace, man. Now, I just want to say, in my last lecture, I spoke about a couple of things that came off maybe like I was bragging. And I'll tell you one, and I'll say it now so you'll see. Ah, oh, that's dope. I love Hashem. For giving me the opportunity to fix that. So listen, at my past lecture, I was going to say I had something in common with the big Sadiq. Now, I didn't want to come off like I was bragging. So I'm going to say it in a way so you understand that it's just, A, it's the truth. And B, it's something I take pride in. And it's something that God willing, you'll get one day and you'll also take pride in it. And I'll tell you what it was. Rab Sion Abba Shaul, he said one of the hardest things for him was not to think about God in the bathroom. I have that problem. Thank God. That's a beautiful problem to have because it shows that you're constantly thinking about God. Why would a problem person have a problem like that? Why, they can't think about other things? No, because it shows that you're constantly focused on God. Everything you do, you're always like addicted to God. And that's what I wanted to say in my past lecture. That's what I have a, something in common with. And I take pride in that, man. I like that, actually. I just don't want people, you know, to think maybe I'm bragging because, again, 
should be like really a red alert, man, that every time you even a little bit, even Shmuel, I came as the prophet to anoint the next king. Just or something like that, he got punished. He wasn't able to find out who was the next king. That's why he had to go to all the sons of of, Ye- of Jesse. And then he found in the end that it was the last son, David. And that's when the oil poured. And that's when he was anointed as king. Hashem will put you down, bro. Devora in her speech, sang a song. I'm the mother of Israel. Something like that. She said, boom. Hashem made her forget her prophecy. <laughs> In the middle of the song, she stopped singing. Why? Because she forgot what she wanted to say. Why? Hashem took away her wisdom. You act haughty, you brag, Hashem will take away your wisdom. You know why? Because He gave you that wisdom. So I'll say, oh, really? Okay, no problem. I'll just take it back. Not a problem, bro. I'll take it right back from you. You understand? When you travel, the Torah will guide you. Proverbs 6.26. What a line. God will reign forever and ever. That's Exodus 5.18. He's letting you know. God is letting you know, I will reign forever and ever. Exodus 15.18. And when you travel, the Torah will guide you. Proverbs 6.26. Man, this is one of the first lectures that I'm smiling. I basically repeated everything I said. I doubled it up. I wanted the message to sing, bro, and it's gonna. I know it. I know this, this one is powerful, bro. A lot of information, bro. We could go over a lot of it. I'll repeat all of it. <laughs> know what time it is man you know exactly what time it is man addicted to god we should all get there i promise you yo i like this look look deuteronomy 59 beware that there not be an ulterior thought in your heart so that you not have a bad eye towards your needy brother and you give him nothing oh my god don't ever do that bro you see god's children suffering you better run to go help them Jew, non-Jew, doesn't matter. We're all children of God. Show respect, man. Remember, I told you, man. Hashem is amazing, man. I just want to say, Hashem, that there's nobody like you. And I say that a billion times, but I say it a billion more. Because the world needs to hear it and get it through that thick head. The world is getting so off the path of God, bro. What do you think, man? It's heading to a really bad place, man. A lot of fighting. It's all ego. That's why God calls this generation the generation of a dog, not a pig. That's the face of a dog. Why? Because the dog has the highest ego. You walk on the street, you mind your own business. He's 100 feet away in his little backyard and start barking at you like a psycho. But for what? But for what? You're not even a threat because he's territorial. He has an ego. You see the ego. What would make a little... Would you go up to somebody... 500 pounds filled with muscles and like try to fight them? No, because you know it'll pick you up and it'll body slam you on your back. <laughs> so you wouldn't even go up to him. So it would make a little chihuahua go up to a Rottweiler. It's ego, ego. It's all ego. That's why Hashem made this edit. The face of the dog, face of the ego. That's the people today. God forbid you step on somebody's sneaker by mistake. He might pull out a gun on you, bro. That's how it is, man. That's the world. It's all ego. So we have to teach people through the word of God to put your ego down and make peace, to be nice, to be clever, to be smart, to not always look for beef because when you look for beef, you're going to get it and you don't want it, bro. Trust me, you don't want it because some people are ready to die out there. So yeah, you'll go on social media, pop a little bit, but you might get popped for that. You know what I'm saying? And to the paparazzi, my cousin never put out the, the movie, God willing, he will. Pop the paparazzi. I like that. You know why pop the paparazzi? Because God is going to get them pop, God forbid, shot. Why? Because you're going to get into somebody's business. You're going to follow them your whole life. But you know what's crazy? Not even get popped. What Hashem will do is Hashem will make it that maybe the government, the IRS will get on them and chase them around and haunt them and hunt them down or who knows what. But you're going to, you know, follow people, get into their business and, and divulge secrets of theirs to the public because you know the public is thirsty for dirt. And you're going to feed it. You're like, really, man? Be honest with you, bro. You remind me of the guy like in the um, in the funeral home that like, you know, digs the hole and throws the dirt. That's you. That's what you do, bro. You dig a hole and throw dirt and try to bury the world, man. That's what you do. That's what you do with your gossip. Why do you think Hashem is so against gossip? Miriam spoke gossip about, about, uh, uh, about Moshe Rabbeinu's wife that he didn't spend time with her, this, that. And it was a fair criticism, but Hashem got upset. Hashem got very upset. Moshe Rabbeinu was praying for her. Hashem said, I'm sorry. Seven days outside the camp. Forget about it. Would her father not, would she not be embarrassed if her father was to spit in her face? 
let her remain outside of the camp for seven days. That's what Hashem said. Wrap your head around that. Hashem's not playing around, bro. And that's Miriam, who's a prophetess, who was so holy. Oh, my Lord. You don't understand who she was, man. I'm telling you who she was. She was one of the most amazing women ever. And she spoke the truth, but it was behind his back. So Hashem punished her seven days outside of the camp. And then we waited for her. You know why we waited for her? Just like she waited for Moshe Rabbeinu to see who was going to take his basket. So Hashem made us wait for her. That's why the camp didn't move when she was in quarantine. Leprosy. She had leprosy. That's what Hashem gave her. What a lesson we learned, man. It's one of the ten things that every Jew must remember. You know, like coming out of Egypt and destroying Amalek, how Bilam tried to curse us, that God gives you well, the ornaments of Jerusalem, and a couple of other things, if I could remember it off the top. But there's like ten things that you got to remember. <laughs> the golden calf, getting the Torah at Harsinai, and remembering Miriam, that was one of the things. So remember that. Why? Because Hashem is teaching us, don't speak gossip. So look what Miriam got from God. And she was the most holy. And she spoke a little bit gossip. It wasn't even malicious. And look at her punishment. Now you, not holy, and <laughs> doing it with the intention to bury people. What do you think your punishment's going to be? Oh, it's going to be horrific, bro. You paparazzi, you better stop. Pop! the paparazzi gonna pop yourself like a bubble bro or like a pimple and get rid of that profession and go do something else man cause you're gonna bury yourself with your camera or they're gonna take pictures of you in compromising positions and show it to the world and then you're gonna die of shame that's exactly what it is man mental health boy you better stop playing with God you want mental health? I hear all these dudes talking about mental health, mental health, mental health. You want mental health? Don't sin. You want peace of mind? Don't sin. Protect your peace. Don't sin. Because you can protect your peace all day. You have sins. God's going to have to bring you some drama, bro. Then you better say sorry now. Say sorry now, man. Stop wasting time, bro. Acting like it's all lovely. It's not. If you're going to treat God like you could sin and just be like whatever, whatever, and nobody cares, you know, God will punish you for that, man. Don't do that. You have desires, you sin, ask for forgiveness, cry, beg, and get out of depression by not dwelling on the sin. Just move on, but let Hashem know that you love Him. He'll know, He'll know. He sees your heart, He'll really know. He'll know better than anybody you've ever known will know. But just show contriteness and He'll erase the sin. You know how I know that? Because He says that. You not care, but lo you not care. You not care if you repent, lo you not care if you don't. Very simple. You can flip it however you want to flip it. But flip it always to the right side, to the positive side, to the side of God, to the side of light, to the side of righteousness, to the side of humility, to the side of blessing, to the side of peace, to the side of holiness, and to the side where everything's right and pure. And I just want to take a second to say, Hashem, thank you so much for giving me my heart and all the other organs in my body that work in unison to keep me alive so I could serve you. I just wanted to take a second to say thank you for that. And every time you do something, like right now, I'm about to upload this video to YouTube. Say, God, please help me upload this video to YouTube. God, thank you for the water. A lot of people don't say brachot, so I would just tell you, instead of not saying a bracha ever, right, you're too lazy to say the bracha for, I don't know, no problem. Get a drink, and before you drink, say thank you, God, for the water. And when you're done drinking, say thanks again, Hashem. That's it. Do that. You'll get credit for that. I promise you. The Gemara says a person shouldn't be all day like he's praying. So the question is, how can you be all day and pray? You can't go to work. You can't do this. You can't eat. What all day you're going to be praying? It's not what it means. When the Gemara says all day a person should pray, it means everything you do, you should ask God to help you. You're going to send a fax right now. Please, God, help this fax go through successfully. That's how it should be. It should be that you're always stuck to God. It should be that you're always looking for ways to get closer to Him and to trust Him and to know that without Him you're nothing and to know that you're in this world for a temporary amount of time to fix what you need to fix. Don't waste it. Hold on to it. Get close to God because when you're close to God, you get heaven. And when you get heaven, you get an eternity of peace and there's nothing 
nothing, nothing, nothing you can tell me or describe to me that would be better than that. Get close to God. Love you, Hashem.